couple of days since sketchbook summer wrapped up but I wanted to take a moment before too much time had passed and stop and reflect on some of what uh, I've learned through the experience uh, if you're not familiar with sketchbook summer if you're just uh, joining this channel for the first time it's basically a challenge where you commit yourself to fill an entire 110 page eight and a half by 11 sketchbook both sides uh, in 30 days well, 31 days in this case. You can take on the challenge anytime you want, but this is the first year that I decided to work with my friend Matthew Armstrong to make it a community event. So this year we put the word out, got a ton of people signed up, and we all started the challenge together on July 1st, 2017. Um, I had made attempts at this before when I was younger, and I could have sworn that I had a sketchbook that could prove that I accomplished it. Um, but I'll be honest, uh, I could not find any proof that I've ever completed the challenge uh, before Before this. Um, I went into the challenge pretty confident, but I got to say, I got humbled very quickly. Uh, after the first day, day, really, I already started panicking. Uh, this is a tough challenge. You got to spend a lot of time every day to get in the necessary pages it consumed my thoughts every single morning. I was thinking the same thing. I was just like, how am I going to get in the sketching I need to today to finish this? Uh, and one of the most challenging things was just thinking of what to draw. Uh, I should have followed the lead of everyone else and just stuck to the theme a bit more, and that would have really helped. Um, I'll actually talk a little bit about that more later, but I felt like I spent so much time just like worrying and stressing about and trying to think of, of what I was going to draw. The other thing I was totally unprepared for in this challenge was that about halfway through, I just started getting this hand pain. Uh, surprise, surprise, doing this much drawing can cause hand pain, especially when I'm already drawing full time and doing a lot of writing on the side. I mean, it's been a long time since I've had hand pain from drawing, but I de definitely developed it this month. I even had to switch drawing tools for a bit I was using a big, thick Crayola marker for several days just because I could use it without pushing too hard. And I had to take a break one full day just to give me some hand rest, uh, which sucked because that put me behind. So you'll see in just a little bit here um, the, the stuff I started drawing with green. That's where I started getting the hand pain because I started using this green Crayola. Um, and sadly, that was not the only day that I fell behind. Uh, or I didn't admit my goal or didn't draw at all. There were a couple of days where I just got really busy with other things and completely forgot to do any drawing. But, you know, as these sort of things happen, about halfway through, I started to figure some things out that made finishing the challenge easier. First, the biggest discovery I made is I started one morning where I decided to just do a bunch of quick gestures. I think I used the um, website Line of Action. There's a lot of websites like this. Later on, I used Quick Poses just because it did 45, had an option to do 45 second poses, which I really liked. But for this time, I, I did 30 second poses um, with the Quick Poses, and I set a timer for 20 minutes. Uh, and so I did 30 second duration on each pose for 20 minutes. And after doing 20 minutes of that, I was, I was totally exhausted. Um, but I had filled six pages, which was awesome. I was struggling to make this quota of filling four pages. Uh, I was totally stoked. I immediately posted a video to Facebook about it saying, hey, here's a way you can kind of fill up your sketchbook. Uh, I suddenly felt that there was this chance that I could um, catch up. Now, that discovery didn't come without its, its doubts. There was definitely a part of me that wondered if this approach was cheating. And I'd, I'd be interested in your opinions on that. Um, the conclusion I finally came to is that the nature of this challenge pushes you to sketch in a certain way. When you focus on volume, it affects what you draw. You can't focus too much on detail, at least not too much, but rather you have to opt for drawing lots of things and iterating things quickly. And I've kind of decided that I want to embrace that about Sketchbook Summer. It's a specific way to approach sketching that allows you to grow in an equally specific way. There's a place for thoughtful, detailed work, even during sketchbook summer, but it shouldn't be the majority of what you do. Um, I honestly don't know how it could be. Um, and I think quick gesture drawing is probably 
the most pure expression of this approach. Uh, and it's not easy. It's, it's tough and it's exhausting to sustain the focus for 20 minutes straight uh, for 30 second gestures. And gesture drawing also led me some, to some other important insights. Um, doing longer gesture sessions are also, a, are, are also great and they're a great way to fill a book fast. I mean, you can do uh, one minute sittings, you can do two minute sittings, five minutes, um, and you can still go through a lot of pages that way. Uh, you know, on those longer poses, they might be a little bit more presentable if you want to show off your work. I also started using poses I had sketched during gesture sessions as starting points for new pages. It helped me solve my problem of, of trying to think of what to sketch. So I just started going into this pattern of, of saying, okay, do gestures and then build something off of a gesture. And from there, it kind of primed my brain to be inventive. After doing gestures, I would do some sketches based on those gestures and then I would get ideas in the process and start playing around with them. It would give me fuel to finish another couple of pages. Um, another approach I took was uh, to choose a single theme and to iterate on it over and over. I would do two or three studies from reference and then try to figure out the specific rules that applied to that thing I was drawing. From there, I'd try to do my own versions without reference and kind of do them more stylized. And then I would kind of just do whatever, wherever that took me, whatever whims that gave me. I did that with a bunch of chimpanzees. You probably saw the chimpanzees I did. I did a bunch of motorcycles. I think I, I got a little bit farther with chimpanzees than motorcycles. Motorcycles are still really, really tough for me. Um, with both these approaches, whether with gestures or um, starting with a theme, I learned that having reference can really propel you forward with this challenge. In the future, I want to start with reference every day of the challenge. I, I also learned why so many people wanted themes. I honestly should have used the themes more and should have started from doing studies of the pictures that Matthew and I posted. Um, you know, one of the best things to come out of this that I didn't expect was that I was able to focus on sketching being fun again. I couldn't focus too much on how much I had to do every day, so I ended up just getting lost in sketching, and I was surprised how much I just felt totally chill and relaxed and enjoyed doing it. I spent some time at, at the coffee shop and some time at the park and with family where I was just able to, just to relax and just enjoy drawing. Um, and this is, this is such a great thing for me just because I've been drawing professionally for such a long time uh, that I've gone to the point a bunch of times where it just has stopped being fun. It's just been a chore and been difficult. Um, and it was great to get back to a place where I could just you know, really enjoy doing it. Um, and the calmness and the pleasure I got from doing it was really great. I'm probably not going to draw this intensity very often, but I do want sketching to be part of my regular day-to-day -day again. I need to spend a, a bit of time every day sketching and find those times at parks and coffee shops to just chill and enjoy doing it. Um, for next year, I, I think I want to try to do more fun, wacky challenges. I did a bunch right at the beginning and, and a bunch at the end on, on kind of the finale that I did. And I really enjoyed that. I, uh, I want to work up just with, on coming up with more prompts along these lines. Uh, and, you know, I'm not totally sure if I'm going to take on the full challenge next year. I mean, we'll definitely do Sketchbook Summer again. Uh, we de already have this community here and I want to kind of cheer everyone on. And I certainly feel like I had to at least go through it once all the way just so that I, I feel I can honestly coach people through it but it's just a lot of work I mean we'll see it's maybe it's like giving birth to a child it's like not that I've experienced that but from when, when I've talked to like my wife you kind of go through it and you say hey well I'm never doing that again but then time passes and you forget the pain and just think about the good stuff and so I don't know we'll see I might jump back again I would I would hate to have learned so much this time around and not to apply it um, so those are some of my impressions and some of my, my thoughts from this year. Um, I really wanted to find a place that I could really set a lot of that stuff in stone. So uh, I'm going to be collecting all of my best sketches from this month and I'm putting them into a hard copy book. You guys should be able to pick it up at sketchbooksummer.com. I'm going to put the link here. Um, should be here in the screen someplace or it'll be in the end of the video or down in the description. Um, there's going to be a lot of like really cool art. Uh, from this month, but also uh, commentary and thoughts uh, like in this video of what I learned, how I approach things and some strategies for being successful next year. So thanks for watching me. If you participated in Sketchbook Summer, 
I'd love to hear your stories. You can email me, PM me, send me links to your videos or blog posts or whatever. Um, I also really want to know if you finished. Uh, we haven't seen uh, too many people that have come out and said that, that they completed the challenge, but I want to know who finished. I want to see your final page with the date. I would love to see a flip through of your entire sketchbook in a video. You don't necessarily have to do all the commentary like I've done today. Um, but just to kind of see, see the whole thing would be awesome. And, and that would allow, you know, us to, to kind of celebrate you. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, of course, please subscribe, please like the video and we'll see you next time.